Hey guys, it's May May, and today's video is all about stamping. Now, I've done a video similar to what you're going to watch today a long time ago called Stamping Basics 101, and that video is still available. I'll link it below, but for today, we're going to look at a whole new look at it, and the reason is I've kind of changed the way I do things, and I've got some new opinions of stamping, and I want to share that with you. Now, today's video is only going to cover stamps and stamping. We're not talking ink today or paper or any of that good stuff. All that will come later. This is going to be a series that I do for you guys to kind of help you get started. Let's kick it off by saying what are stamps? Let me show you some. This is an example of a stamp set. You've probably seen these in videos and people are showing you I'm using this set or that set and this happens to be from my line. This is a photopolymer set, a stamp set. I'm going to teach you the difference in those in a second. The cool thing about these kinds of stamps versus those woodblock stamps, which we'll also get into, is that these don't take up much space when you store them. Um, you can put these into binders. I'll link a video below for storage as well. You can put these in a little container and stand them up on your desk. You can put them into little pockets that they make special for them and they just don't take much space. So basically this clear stamp set has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 14 different stamps and if you had 14 woodblock stamps it'd take up a lot of space. So these are great for space saving. They also do a really good job. Let me show you some stuff. So in case you're not familiar with woodblock stamps, this is what they look like. These have been around for a really, really long time and a lot of companies launched doing these types of stamps. They're still amazing, they work wonderful, and they hold up for years. On the back side, you'll see that they typically use a red rubber material, which I think is amazing, by the way. Red rubber stamps are awesome. I have a lot in my collection and I hold on to them all the time. Now, another thing that a red rubber stamp offers you is this fuzzy little piece that pushes in. Can you see how it gives a little bit? This is helpful for some people when they're learning to stamp is having this little piece that gives. So that's probably one of the reasons we get such great uh, images when we use these red rubber stamps. These are just individual stamps that look like this and are on these pretty thick, about one inch blocks. This is an example of a bigger wood block stamp. You can see how big this one is in my hand. The same um, cushy side, it's not red rubber, it's a gray rubber, but you can see that same cushy side. Here is the stamp on the back, and it's very meaty and very heavy. These stamps get stamped on the page like this, and a lot of times we press them down. They're just nice and meaty, so that's a big red rubber stamp there. This is an example of a woodblock stamp that is a background stamp. So you can see here that it is a big image. It's really, really big. This one's about six inches. So this one you can imagine takes up a lot of space in your room when you try to store it. So you would store these something like this. Now listen, I have these in containers because I love them. I put them in bowls, I have them in drawers. I love to keep these in my room because I still love my wood block stamps. But that is what, when someone talks about a wood block red rubber stamp, that's what they're talking about. Now this type of stamp is known as a cling stamp. Um, C-L-I-N-G, because I know my southern gets in the way. This is a cling stamp. It's clinging to this acetate sheet. When I turn it over, you see that we have red rubber on the back. Now, you get the same quality of the red rubber images, which is just beautiful, but you don't have the block that you have to store. These come on a sheet, just like your photopolymer, your clear stamps. This takes just a little, maybe a tiny bit more width, but not very much. These guys are made in such a way that they cling to your clear blocks, which we're gonna get into that in just a second. So you can see how if I touch this in the middle and I let go, you can see how it's clinging to my finger. It has a sticky back to it and it will stick to those blocks or to your stamp presses or whatever you might be using. That's how these are mounted. So many people ask me about these. They're like, I see those in the store, but how do I use them? You just take them and you put them onto your clear blocks just like you would with your clear stamps. So they just stick just like that, okay? Now these happen to be white on one side and these happen to be gray and you can see how pretty these never stick to the acetate. <laughs> Do you see that? That is sometimes a problem with these stamps. They get a little less sticky over time. This one is really less sticky. I'll show you what I mean. It's really lost its stick as far as touching it. But when I take it to the block, it will stick to the block. Isn't that really weird how that happens? Like it totally will not stick to my hand, but it will totally stick to the block. So it's just a feature of these guys that they're made to stick to your acrylic. They don't 
like to stick to this little paper at all, but there you go. With these, you get that same red rubber quality and they don't take up much space. They just happen to be different colors. They actually, I've seen these actually done in lots of different colors because they really have um, the option of changing this back into different colors a lot more than they do with say the clear stamps because they are clear. These stamps in this collection are not photopolymer. They are made with another product, probably a silicone or an acrylic of some sort, and I wanna show you. See how firm that sticks to this backer sheet? Also, watch what happens when I go to remove it from the sheet. It's really stuck down. Now you may be wondering, how can I tell the difference in my stamp collection between photopolymer and the acrylic or silicone type stamp? Here's one way you can tell. These feel a lot like a rubber band. Like if you've ever played with a rubber band and stretched it like this, this has the feel of a big rubber band. Also, they're very malleable. They're very squishy. You can really dig into those and squish them and flatten them out. And therein lies some of the problem when we're stamping with them, which we'll get into that in just a few minutes. But that is a silicone or acrylic style stamp. And this is another example of that. And I'll show you what it's like when you take it off. You've had these before where you struggle to get them off the package, especially the bigger stamps. They really are harder to get off. And then they stretch like this. These are not photopolymer. Now, do they still work? They do. Do they stamp the same? In some cases, and in some cases they don't. It depends a lot on the stamp and what ink you're using, which remember, ink comes in another video. Now these are photopolymer, and yes, they're from my stamp line, but I wanna show you. I have other ones that are photopolymer. I have a lot of close to my heart stamps that I've collected over the years, and they are photopolymer as well. Now I wanna show you the difference in these. These do not feel like a rubber band. These feel like, hmm, not liquid. <laughs> they feel very thick and very firm, and you can't squish them. You really can't flatten them out, which really helps when you're stamping. These also have a very specific smell. Polymer stamps just smell, photopolymer stamps just smell so good to me. So I'll tell you something interesting that I learned. I've been making stamps since 2013 and I've never seen the process for actually making stamps until about three weeks ago when I got to go to my manufacturer's warehouse and see how these are done. Actually touch and feel and see the whole process, super cool. These photopolymer stamps are actually cured with light. They're, you know, explaining the photo part. They're cured with like a, um, a with a like an ultraviolet light. It's really cool how that is done. So this one again is the photopolymer. Now I want you to notice. Yes, I can stretch this, but it does not stretch like a rubber band. It resists me much more, and it just doesn't flatten out, which is a good thing. We want that. Now. Photopolymer stamps will stain. A good photopolymer stamp is definitely gonna stain with certain inks. The reason for that is they are good quality and they kind of hold on to the ink for you and then when they release, they leave a stain behind. No big deal because they still work just the same. So you can see here on these, this is another like fine detail stamp and it just doesn't stretch like the rubber bandy ones. Love a good photopolymer stamp. And again, if you're wondering if your stamps are photopolymer or not, I promise you, if you have a set of photopolymer stamps that you know are photopolymer and you feel them, touch them, and use them, you'll be able to tell the difference instantly when you're not using a photopolymer stamp. So you see I have a couple of clear stamps laying here. Let's talk about blocks that you use for clear stamps and also why you need them. This is that wood block stamp I showed you in the beginning. It comes with its own built-in block for the stamp. This one, you just ink it up and you're instantly ready to use it. So it's pretty handy, it's all right there together. But for these guys, you're gonna need something to mount them to. I prefer the clear acrylic like this. This is the one I just put in my hand, and this is how you mount them. This stamp is upside down, so the stamp image is faced on the bottom toward the project. The solid is on the back, and you just pick it up on your block, and it, it just clings perfectly. And I wanna tell you what got me into clear stamps. I love how this looks. <laughs> I love to watch people stamping and how they would just put their little stamps on the clear blocks and go to town and I just love it and it made me want to get into it. And this one in particular is that stamp I told you is squishy and I want to see if I can get it real close and show you this. Let's just see. When I press this line, it flattens out. Like I can almost flatten this image completely out. And that's what I mean by these are squishy and they move around, okay? So this one is photopolymer. Whoop. 
<laughs> it's a photopolymer. Here's another block to put it on. And when I bring it up to you, you can probably see that I can press on this guy and those little images don't go away. Do they give? Yes, they give slightly, but they don't flatten out. So, these both work on these clear acrylic type blocks. Now you might be saying, okay, but I'm brand new. Which blocks do I need? So now let's talk about clear blocks and clear products for the stamps. These blocks are the ones I carry in my store. I was really on the fence for the longest time as to what sizes I should carry. As you know, in my store, I carry Maymay's favorite things, so I wanted to make sure they were the things I love. This guy right here is my very favorite block I've ever used. There's something about being able to wrap your hands all the way around this block to get such a stable image. I don't know what it is, but every person that has ever bought this from me, I promise has said the same thing. There's something about being able to hold this block the way we can. Now, these guys are also perfect in their own right. This one is a very good size for stamping when you're gonna use a block and you're gonna have larger images. And it's also great because it has these grips in the side where your fingers can sink in. And I love that because it gives you a place to grip, especially if you're wanting to watch what you're doing and you can put your fingers out to the side and support it. This is a three by four inch. Now this one is two by two. It also has those grooves on the side. Perfect for stamping those smaller images. This is a one and a half by two and it has those grooves as well. Now this one does not have the grooves. If it had the grooves, there'd be a lot less um, block here. This is a one by one inch block and you might be thinking, no one needs a one by one inch block. And for years I thought the same thing till I got one and I'll show you why this one is so pivotal in just a little bit when we start stamping. So that's the blocks I use 90% of the time. Honestly, these are the ones you'll see in my videos. These are the ones I use. If you have these in your collection, you're pretty much covered. However, However, if stamping is your thing and you're going to become a, a very, very proficient stamper, you might want to look at something like this. This is called a Fisker's Stamp Press. What this does, it still allows those stamps to stick to it, okay? They stay in place. And then these spongy little legs right here allow you to sit this over your project and press and wiggle that stamp into position. So if you weren't exactly sure, like you were scared, maybe you'd be a little bit off this way or that way, this guy lets you see how much I can move him around before I get him to the surface. It's perfect for that. Now you do have to do some pressure in the middle with this guy, no big deal. We'll talk about that when we ink him up. But that is your Fisker stamp press. The other cool thing about it is, it can hold multiple stamps, okay? So if you wanted to do a scene, maybe we wanted this snowman and we wanted this little tree here like this. You could absolutely load this up with multiple stamps and be able to stamp a scene with it. Perfect for that. So that is the Fisker Stamp Press. I like this tool. I've had it for many, many years. I feel like I use it a lot. Another thing I like about it is, let's say I have a piece of paper. I'll just use this for example. Have a piece of paper, and I know I want this snowman right here in this area. You know, I can lay it where I want it, get everything laid out. Maybe I want this tree over here on this side of the page. Now, yes, you could do the same thing with just a block, okay? Just pick these up like this but you can also take the stamp press and lay it over it and then pick them up and they're right where you want them. So when you go back to stamp, you can put them right in position. Now this is not a stamp positioner per se, this is more of a stamp block, but if you're interested in a stamp positioner, I'm gonna link a video below where I review the Misty stamping tool. It is the perfect stamp positioning tool, you must see it. Now this tool is perfect for your wood block stamps. You can't see through your wood block stamps like you can a clear stamp, which is another bonus of clear stamps. So what you have to do with these to line them up is use something like this tool, the Stampamajig. It's simple to use, it's a little hard to explain, but I'm gonna do my best. So this sheet sits right in the crook of this little tool. It just butts up into that corner nice and snug. And what you wanna do is ink up your stamp. You don't have to do a perfect impression because we're just going to use this one as like a, a tool, a working uh, stamp. So you're going to hold your stamp -a jig in place and your acetate sheet and using the corner of your wood block, you're going to press it to the tool and up into that corner and then sit it down on that acetate sheet making an impression on the acetate. Now again, this impression is not perfect, but it works just fine for what we want. 
let's just say you had a piece of paper with a square on it, much like this one, and you wanted that ladybug in a very specific spot on that piece of paper, say right there. You know that with your block, that's where it would end up. Here's how you know. You take that T, that little T tool, and put it right to the edge of that acetate, right onto the project, okay? Lift the acetate up, leaving the T in place. Ink your stamp one more time. Place it into the corner and then press it down. Now you can remove this because you know that's exactly where you were supposed to be. Leave this here for a moment and look, you get a perfect, a perfectly placed image right where you want it by using the stamp -a jig So that's what that one is for. I love it. If I'm using a woodblock stamp, it's definitely something that I use. So you wanna probably get one of those for your collection if you're gonna have wood blocks. Same piece of paper with a clear stamp. We don't have to stress about that as much because as you can see, I can see straight through it. So if I want it right here, I can press it there and know that it's right where I wanted that image to be. Now I told you we'd talk about why I thought the size of a block matters. Can you see these small words inside of this stamp set? Like they're sore and dream and smile, they're small words. I wanna show you what happens with these little guys and I'm gonna zoom you in to see it. So let's say I only had this big old three inch by four inch block. You see how big it is. And I was having to use it for this little tiny stamp. Here's what can happen. You go to ink it up on your stamp block or on your ink pad and you're trying to be really careful and you tap it down, but inevitably you're gonna press and turn and you're gonna pick up ink on your block. Can you see that ink right there on the block? That will end up on your project because there's a very good possibility you will wiggle with this guy because it's really just too big for what we're pressing down on the image. I'll show you what, we, what I mean. So a piece of scrap paper and I go to stamp this down and I can be super careful and barely touch it but most of us want to put a little pressure and if I start to press I can wiggle this block around you see how it's so much space to wiggle which is going to give me a poor impression okay although that one looks pretty good <laughs> now that's why I suggest using the smaller blocks let me show you the same word smile I'm gonna clean this block off just with a uh, baby wipe. That way you don't have any staining on there. Of course, that was memento. It's not gonna stain anyway. Inks are coming in another video. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Here's the word smile on this little bitty block. Look how much less space we have to wiggle. The same ink pad, tapping it on. Look how I'm not having to stress because I have control of this stamp, right? Then I take it to my project and I can stamp it. And I'm even using one hand now and getting a nice crisp stamp. I did not believe in these guys for the longest time, but I think these small blocks, when you have small words, if you're using a planner, you need one of these guys. If you're using those tiny little um, things for your, like your planner squares, I don't even see how you're doing it without these tiny little blocks. You gotta have something like that. So that's why I like the tiny little blocks. Now let's talk about inking up our stamps. There's a couple of things I see people do that I think really kind of defeats what they're trying to do. One thing is when they take the stamp to the pad and they twist and twist and twist, and that's all they do for inking it up. For me, when I do that, I don't get enough ink on the surface of the stamp, but I also get ink built up in the creases of the stamp. Can you see how wet and sticky that looks? Let me show you what it looks like on paper. When I stamp this down, you'll see that we get kind of some chubby spots in the stamp. See where we've got some little blobs of ink because I'm picking it up when I'm twisting onto my ink um, my ink pad. So I suggest don't twist it. Let me clean this really well. My suggestion for inking the stamp works just like this. I want you to take the stamp and I want you to go to the project or to the ink pad and I want you to press evenly. Hold, see how I hold the stamp all the way around so that I'm not wiggling or rocking and I'm pressing into the pad evenly. Now, I'm moving the block around. The reason for that is I wanna make sure I have ink on every portion of my image, but I'm not twisting it. Then when I take it to my project, I do the same thing. I sit the image down, I don't rock it, and I just let it sit there for a second. This is a key, and I've learned this recently from several incredible stampers on YouTube. Let this sit there. It does not hurt, at least that ink transfer. If you're having some trouble with some of your stamps not being fully um, stamped, especially in the middle, couple things. Make sure you press the middle, okay? Put some pressure on that, and then let it sit there, and then lift it up. And look how much better your impression is 
when you're not twisting and you're not rocking. Now, this is a photopolymer stamp. They are firm. They can take you sitting this down and putting some pressure on it like this because they're not gonna flatten and they're not gonna mess up the line of your image, okay? Let's look at a silicone stamp. This is that snowman I showed you earlier that is that rubber, kind of rubber band feeling stamp. I'm gonna ink him up. I'm gonna ink him the same way I did with my photopolymer. It's really important that you don't press him on the pad, okay? Because he collapses. Now I'm gonna take him to my page and I'm gonna stamp him down, but I'm gonna put some pressure on him. So I'm pushing that in and I'm gonna lift it up. Now when I do this, I wanna show you this up close. Notice how some of the lines are thicker than others. His head is not as thick as his body, although in the drawing it's the same. The reason for that is because I pressed and it collapsed and it smeared that ink. Let me show you that when I don't press. So back to the ink pad, okay? Place him onto our project, let him sit there, and I'm gonna put a tiny bit of pressure. And I'm gonna let him sit and let that ink transfer for a second. Then I'm gonna lift him up. Look how much thinner, let me even compare them side by side. Look how much thinner the lines are. Can you see that? He's a cleaner, crisper image. The whole reason for this is because the silicone squishes down and it spreads that ink out whenever you put pressure on it. So the best thing to do is ink him up by tapping, sit him onto the project, a light pressure, okay? and then let him sit there for a minute and lift him up and you get a great image that way. Now for one of those silicone images and how you get the ring around your stamp. The first place it starts is in the ink pad. If you take your stamp and you kind of rock it around onto your ink pad or if you don't put it straight flat down, can you see how I'm kind of lifting up? If you don't put him straight down, you get ink in places you don't mean to have it. I've got it on my block and I have it on the edge of this stamp. Let me show you what's gonna happen. When I take it to the page and I press it down, remember this is a silicone stamp, so it's gonna squish. I press him and I rock him, because that's probably my habit. Look at this image I get. It's not very crisp and clean. It's kind of smeared and I have a ring around the tree. See that little ring? That's from pressing and rocking. You don't wanna do that. You don't wanna press and rock. Now I'm gonna show you something. I'm not gonna clean this block. There's still ink all around this block. I'm gonna stamp him up poorly again. I'm gonna put ink all over as many edges as I can get on him. But I'm gonna show you the difference when you just place the stamp, even pressure just a little bit, let it sit, and then lift up, straight up. Look at the difference in our two images. Isn't that incredible? The pressing and the rocking and the twisting, that's what gets you this. Sit it down flat, light pressure, lift it straight up, get you a nice crisp image every time. Now while we're talking about using ink pads with our stamps, we're not gonna talk about the differences in these ink pads except for the pad itself. I wanna show you, this Memento ink pad looks like this on the top. When I turn it to the side, I'm gonna use the edge of this which I can clean off. I wanna show you, do you see how firm this pad is? It doesn't give, it doesn't squish like a sponge. It's actually, kind of a canvas material on top. I'm sure there's a technical name for it, but it's a nice firm felt pad, okay? So you can see that it doesn't squish really a lot when you put pressure on it, which means ink is not gonna run up around the sides of your stamps when you ink it. So that is that pad. The same kind of pad is found on the Versafine, and I don't have a, let me do it with um, this ruler. <laughs> On this pad, you can see it's just like it. It doesn't squish like a sponge. It's pretty firm. And that's the same kind of felt canvas topped pad, okay? Now Versamark is gonna be one I can show you really well. This ink pad is a squishier ink pad, okay? So I'll use that ruler again on the other end to show you. Watch this one. See how it just collapses with the ruler? You can see that it is a squishy, squishy, spongy ink pad. Spongy ink pads like this cause you, when you put too much pressure on them to get the ink around your stamp onto the actual part that's not the image, right? Now I can't show you with the Versamark how it looks on paper because it's clear. So what I'm gonna do is show you using this um, alabaster ink from Brutus Monroe, which is also a squishy ink pad. Let me show you. 
get the other end of this ruler. I'll have to clean it right off, but I want you to see this. It's squishy like a sponge. See how that sinks in like that? Okay, that is not a bad thing, by the way. Um, those types of ink pads are very, very useful. You just need to get a feel for it, okay? So let's show what I'm talking about. So here's what I'm talking about. Because this ink pad is a sponge pad, again, not a bad thing, when I ink this up, I want to use a light pressure, okay? A good light pressure on this spongy pad will get me a nice stamped image. Again, I'm using a spongy pad and a rubber band style um, stamp, so I had a lot of light pressure there. I didn't press anything to get that. I didn't press it on here, I didn't press it on here. But I wanna show you what happens when we do have too much pressure. We take this and we ink this guy up and we press it in nice and firm into that sponge because we wanna get it nice and covered. Look at the edges of our stamp now. We have it on our um, block. We have it around the image where it shouldn't be. And we're gonna get ring around the stamp. Now, because I know this ink dries very permanent, I'm gonna clean it off of my block real quick so I don't end up with white ink on my block because I like to keep them clean, so <laughs> there we go. But now, I'm gonna squish it onto here. I'm gonna stamp with pressure and rocking. And I'm gonna show you what we end up getting. So you see the difference in those two images? It's the pressure on these rubber band style stamps, okay? You saw with very light pressure, it works great. I wanna show you with a, a photopolymer stamp as well because this was, like I said, that stretchy, stretchy one. And I wanna show you with photopolymer. We're gonna use the same ink pad, okay? Because it's a squishy pad, so I can show you. And I'm going to ink this up correctly. Very light pressure, and I'm not squishing into that pad. Very light, even pressure all the way around. And then I'm gonna use regular photopolymer stamp pressure here. Let that ink transfer, okay? And then I'm gonna show you what we get. That is a nice, crisp, even image, okay? But now I'm gonna take that same image and I'm gonna overpress into this spongy stamp. Cause I wanna get lots of ink on there, right? That's what we think that it helps, but it really doesn't. Look what I've done at the bottom of that stamp. I have built that ink up in there in such a way that when I stamp this, I'm probably gonna have a mess. I don't know, let's see. Now I'm gonna stamp it down and I'm gonna overpress. Pressing really hard. And look at the difference. Now this one may seem, oh, but it's whiter and crisper. We can still get whiter and crisper, okay? We just need to ink it longer and not press so we get that ink all down in there. Also, notice how when I press so hard, really the stamp itself did not stamp, but the pressure around it is what got the ink, and that's why it looks blurry and messy. Okay, so there is that example. I wanna clean this because it'll dry permanently. Another question I get a lot is how to get a good impression with these big background stamps. A lot of times you'll ink this guy up and when you put him on the page, you'll miss a spot and you won't get good pressure. I wanna show you how to do that. Let me move these out of the way and bring over my VersaFine and I'm going to ink it. The first thing you wanna do is take the ink pad to the stamp. Don't try, let me show you what happens. Don't try to put your ink pad down and like, oh, I hope I'm getting it. You know, I hope I'm getting it there and you know, just kind of feeling around. Plus, when you do this, I'm not getting a good pressure on my stamp. I'm not getting an even pressure onto the ink pad. I can tell it's kind of wiggly, but when I do this, I can lay this ink pad flat down, just like this and get a nice even coating. Now, if I take this stamp and I sit it down and I take my palms and press like this, I'll show you what I get. Just the sides. I got a decent impression, believe it or not. But see here where I missed some? I didn't put any pressure right there, so I missed that totally. And with a wood block stamp, that's all you can get. You can't go back and match this up exactly. So let me show you what you can do to make sure you get a nice, even pressure. So I've inked this one up again, and I'm gonna show you what happens when you do it with even pressure all the way around. We're not gonna get any skipped spots, okay? So I've sat that down. I'm gonna start in the middle and press that middle, just like that. I'm gonna come out to the sides, press the side. Then I'm gonna press the edges. See how I'm pushing over there and then I'm gonna push over here. This is a big one, so it takes a lot of pressure. And then you get a nice, crisp, even image all the way around. I put a lot of pressure on that stamp because it's a lot of rubber there that you have to press into the page. Now here's another tip, let me show you. 
For getting even pressure on your stamp, you might consider using a squishy material behind your paper or even a mouse pad. Now this is a piece that comes with some close to my heart stamps. It's just a squishy kind of plastic, but you can also use your mouse pad or anything that has a give to it that's a solid surface. I'm gonna use this guy. What you do is you put this down onto your work surface and then you put your paper on top of it. I noticed that this guy was not stamping very even, so I'm gonna ink him up. Let me move this to the side. I'm gonna ink him up over here. And I'm on top looking at him to make sure I'm getting the ink in all of the spots. I can see a spot there that's not getting good ink coverage. And now I'm gonna stamp him without the plastic first. You see how the plastic stops? I'm gonna stamp him over here without the plastic. Do him like this. And that's, you know, a decent image, but I want you to see that it skipped a spot in the middle. See that? And I didn't apply like uber amounts of pressure, but I wanted to see if this will show you the difference in how this works. So if you so if you're having trouble getting a good crisp image, you might consider putting something squishy underneath your work surface, putting your stamp down, and then pressing into that squishy uh, product or that squishy pad that you have underneath it, and then you get a much better impression. That one's not 100% perfect. There's still a little spot right there, but it's much better than the original one we did, which is here. See that? So think about using that. And this works too with photopolymer or with clear stamps. Let me show you that too. I don't suggest you put a squishy pad underneath your silicone stamps. These ones that are stretchy like a rubber band and they give on you. I wouldn't put anything squishy under them because I think it's going to make a mess. But for your photopolymer stamps, like the butterfly we've been using like crazy, if you're having a hard time getting a good coverage, use something squishy under it and just sort of press into it. What that does is it kind of acts like that little squishy pad that you get on the woodblock stamps anyway. Remember I showed you it had that little squishy pad between? That's what this kind of does for your solid clear stamps on this block without the pad. So that's another idea. Now let's talk about getting a nice clear impression with a solid image stamp. See how this is a solid butterfly image? So there's a lot of surface to be inked here. I'm gonna use some Memento first to show you the difference between Memento ink and the VersaFine ink as far as the outcome that you get. So I've inked this up really well and I can look through the stamp to see if it's inked really well. Also, with a solid image stamp, it is super important that you don't twist on your pad. You have to pat and pick up product, not push it around, okay? So then I'm gonna sit it onto my paper and even pressure all the way around and let it stay there for a second. Don't hurry it, <laughs> let that ink transfer. I'm gonna do this in real time and let you guys watch to see how long I'll keep it there. Just long enough for me to feel like that uh, moisture has gotten into the paper and then lift up. And I get a pretty good image there. You can see how it's pretty, pretty solid, right? All right, let's do that with the VersaFine. The reason I'm showing you the difference is the VersaFine ink is a wetter ink than the Memento. Um, I love, I love both of these inks, but I love how wet the VersaFine is and I get such a good coverage with that ink. So I'm gonna place it down and let it sit just the same. Probably not quite as long. I don't really have to wait as long with this one. Something like that. And you can see how much darker that image is than the other. Still has a little fair bit on the edge. I didn't put a whole lot of pressure there, but there's that. Now, something else I wanna tell you. Some people will tell you that if you're struggling with getting a solid image from your solid image stamps, to run a nail file over them to give them a tooth. Now, I don't have a problem with that, but some people do. So you have to decide if you're willing to do that. What that does is photopolymer kind of comes with this weird um, coating kind of thing it feels like on top of them. So you have to prime these solid image stamps. What I suggest you do is when you get these solid images and you're wanting to work to get really good coverage, stamp it a couple times before you put it on your actual project. Just kind of what they call season your stamps. You really need to season your solid image stamps, believe it or not, because they do need a tooth to grab that ink. It never hurts to ink it, stamp it one time, and then ink it again and stamp it for your project. You'll get a better image that way. Now, another thing I've been asked about is what is stamp masking? This is stamping mask paper. It's made by Inka Dinka Doo, and it's basically just a really thin sticker paper that you can use to mask off images. Now, why would you want to mask off an image? Because let's say you want to make these stockings overlap each other on your project. So I'm gonna ink one here, 
and then I'm gonna do what's called fussy cut this out. Here's what that is. When you take the image and you literally cut it out directly from this sticky paper, and then we're gonna use it to mask our image. So I've cut that out now. So I just have the image of my little um, stocking. So I wanna show you what I'm gonna do. I'm going to stamp the stocking on this piece of paper just like this, okay? And then I'm going to use my sticker that I created or my mask that I created to protect that image while I stamp one more time. What happens is, this is very, very confusing, but what happens is when you stamp like this and you mask off this image, anything you stamp on top of it makes this image be the foreground image. You'll see what I mean in just a second. So if you're building scapes, you know, if you're doing stamp scapes or anything like that, where you're kind of stacking stamps, you know that the first thing you stamp and mask, it will be in front of what you do next. So for example, if I take this stocking and I lay it beside it and stamp again, that sticker is protecting the image behind it while I stamp in front of it then I take my tweezers to pick it up. It's usually easier for me that way. I pick up this sticker and you can see that that first image I did is now in front of the second image. So when we mask, we have to remember that we stamp and cover it and that makes it our front or our most forward image, okay? So you wanna think in advance, what image do I want to be in the front? If you were doing like, I don't know, a row of snowmen and there was a certain one you wanted to be in the front, you wanna stamp him first and then mask him and then do your other images around him. So that is stamp masking. Now this image is totally usable over and over again. You can save this with your stamp and you'll always have it for when you need to mask it off again. While I'm holding this, I wanna to talk to you about this. I've been asked the question, what are digital stamps? There's only one way to explain a digital stamp, and that is this. They are stamps that you print out. Basically, they're printable images. A lot of folks, whenever they create a stamp line, they might offer you the digital version of it as well, so you don't have to have the tangible stamp you can just have it on your computer and print it over and over again because you've purchased that image just like a stamp. Um, some folks use them to color. Maybe they wanna print out those stamped digital images so then they can color them. But literally, it is a printed image that you print out of the computer. So basically, you'd buy a digital stamp, download it to your computer, print it onto your cardstock or whatever paper you choose, and then use it in whatever way you like. Now let's talk cleaning stamps. Now you have some options. There's lots of different ways to clean a stamp. One way is to simply take it to your sink, use a little warm soapy water, use a mild soap, something like hand soap, and just kind of put them under the water and rub it around and get that ink off of them. Now if you're using something like a stays on or a pigment ink that is more permanent, it's gonna stain your stamp and that's fine. You'll clean it, there'll be some color left behind, but the stamp will work just the same as it did before. Now in my craft room, what I like to do when I'm stamping over and over again is I keep a baby wipe handy and I have it on my surface. I take my stamp to it and wipe that ink away. Now the reason I do it this way, especially if I'm gonna be stamping over and over again, kind of in you know succession one after the other, this way I'm not getting the moisture from that baby wipe into the holes of my stamp. Instead, I'm just kind of rubbing the ink off of the surface, okay? So that's how I do this with a baby wipe. Now one thing you'll wanna make sure of, and I did contact my manufacturer and ask them this question. Um, someone has said we don't wanna use alcohol on the stamps. These wipes don't have alcohol in them, I check, so you might want to make sure you don't um, pick up a baby wipe that has alcohol in them. But yes, they say you don't want to clean them with alcohol, you want to clean them with mild soapy products. Now, so another thing you can do is you can buy stamp cleaners. This is actually one by my friend Christopher Allen that I use and I really like it. It's Brutus Monroe Squeaky Clean. That's the name. I get asked that a lot when I use it. It's called Squeaky Clean. You can get this from his website and I really love it. It cleans everything. I've even cleaned some of my crafting tools with it because I think it's awesome and I've cleaned my surface with it. The way I use this one in the craft room on surfaces is I just kind of spray it like this and then I wipe it away. Now this is my wet wipe. I would really use a paper towel on my work surface but on my stamps, I would use something more like a, a lint-free cloth, like a chamois, you know what I'm talking about? One of those lint-free cloths would work just great. So there's that idea. 
Another way to clean your stamps is with something like this. This is a stamp cleaner from Close to My Heart. Lots of companies make this. It's not just Close to My Heart that does it. But what you do with this is one side you spray your cleanser on. So let's say I spray some squeaky clean on this side. They're the same. They're both the same. They're little sponges. And then you scrub that stamp into that squeaky clean just like this. This is a sponge that kind of scrubs your stamp. Okay. Then you take it to the other side to clean, to do the dry off basically. So it's like wash and dry and it really gets dry. It's really grabbing and that makes a nice clean stamp. So there's also these products out there. You'll see these on the market. All different, well, lots of different companies make these. So that's a nice idea for cleaning your stamps. Now, if you clean your stamps in the, under the water, like if you take them to the sink and you clean them under the sink, you want to make sure that you let these air dry completely. Don't put them on a paper towel. That'll pick up lint. Put them on something lint-free. Or if you have like a rack, you can lay them on a metal rack and let them dry, air dry. That's what you want to do. You may have a clear stamp that's lost. It's sticky on the back. Washing it with soap and water, just a warm soap and water, and letting it air dry is usually all it takes to get that to stick again. Now, if for some reason it just won't stick no matter what you do, you can add some adhesive to the back of your clear stamps because you love them and you still want to use them. Just add some adhesive to them and they still work just the same. I've never had to do that, but I do know people do it, so if you need to, you can. Lastly, I've been asked how to store stamps. Now, I'm going to show you how I store my stamps, which probably won't work perfect for you, but here's an idea. This is a little basket that I picked up at the Dollar Tree, and I take my stamps and I just stand them up in here. But the reason this works for me is because I use my stamps to show you guys stamp sets, right? So this one, for example. On the front, I have the stamp set that I use in the video, and in the back, I have the one that I show you guys so it's nice and clean so you can see what the stamp looks like. So then I can just slide these in and stack them in and they stay really nice for me. But another way I like to store stamps is using binders. And I'm going to link a video for you guys to be able to see how I do that in a binder form. And that way you can get a good idea. Now, you can also buy sleeves to store your stamps in and put them in those kind of containers and stuff. And if you do a quick search on YouTube, you can find all kinds of stamp storage ideas. So that concludes how to stamp. I put a post on my Facebook group, which is called May May Made It, and so did I. And I asked for questions about stamping, and I feel like I answered a lot of them today. If I missed a question that you have, please feel free to put it in the comment section below this video. I would love to answer those questions because the more questions we ask and the more answers we get, the more educated we are and the more fun we have in our craft room. Now, I used a lot of different products today. If there's something in particular you want to know where I got it or where it came from, just put it in the comments below and I'll make sure that I answer that to tell you where it came from. Hey, thanks so much for watching, guys. And I couldn't end this video without saying to you, happy stamping. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.